we are Art for the Soul, and just a quick summary of who we are is um, we're obviously a volunteer-based program, and we work with low-income, impoverished kids that uh, can't afford opportunities that many other people have. So we teach them the basics of piano, guitar, uh, we give them academic tutoring, and we give them basics of visual arts. So first of all, our progress and our accomplishments. Um, well, we were able to acquire lead teachers in music, visual arts, and tutoring. These are more permanent teachers that are older and professionals. That way, you know, once we graduate from high school, we still have someone there at all times. Uh, we were able to get our computer lab set up. Uh, we increased our capacity for music and tutoring from 49 to 69 slots. Uh, we created the official website and logo, and we also made a lot of advances in the social medium. Due to COVID-19, we created something called the Creative Corner, and these are basically our online classes in substitute. We created a volunteer program. We also registered in pbccan.org, which makes it very easy for us to recruit new volunteers and for people to find us. And yeah, other, other details such as recitals and galleries we had all the time. Uh, we gave scholarships away and brochures and publicity events were developed. Obviously, the very first challenge that everyone has mentioned has been COVID. Uh, and like I said earlier, we created the Creative Corner to sort of, you know, keep these kids engaged and still allow them to, you know, get, get a taste of art for the soul, despite them not being able to be on site. What Creative Corner is, is instead of like being on Zoom where we're looking at each other, since a lot of these kids only have access to maybe one computer, their parents typically need it for work. So we just send them assignments and we send them materials. So for example, they could have been working on a piece of art that you know, reminds them of their hometown. And then eventually we had kids from you know, all of our students and kids from up to Spain and Mexico that got involved some one way or another, you know, just through friends. Uh, they ended up sending in pictures of what they created. So another other challenges that we faced were the development of the volunteer program the Art for the Soul Board, the annual fundraising plan, and a strategic plan. These were all pretty difficult because it just took a lot of time, resources, a lot of manpower, you know, not everyone agreed on everything. So it just, it took a while. Um, so our impact, wow. Um, the number of students we have served from four to 18 is about 69 kids. Uh, also, we have had a great amount of kids return after they finish their initial segment meaning that they are satisfied and happy with the classes, over 60% exactly. We also had students be accepted into Bach Middle School of the Arts and into Dreyfus School of the Arts, which you know we even have preparation programs for these schools. We also have worked on our social media growth. So we created our official logo, our website and Facebook, like I said earlier, and we were featured in three local newspapers. A heartwarming story from one of our students, and this was by far my favorite, though we do have a lot. This is the story of Lupita and her little pink house, as she calls it. Um, I'm, I'm sure you guys could read it, but <laughs> I would like to read it to you. So these are her words exactly. She said, my Dan and my brother built my casita rosada. It was like the castle. My dad said that I am a princess. On the top floor, I slept with my brother. I had a window with many flowers. On the ground floor, there was a table where we ate. It was very pretty. But one day the thieves began to put notes on the door. They said that if my parents didn't give them the money, they would kill us. And that is why we came to the United States. So that is a small part of it. But the reason that is important to us is because we noticed in Lupita's art, music, writing, everything, she consistently drew or talked about a white or a pink house. You know, we, we didn't know why, but eventually once talking to her, we found out that that was the house her dad built for her, you know, like I explained. And she had to flee from the house after the gorillas put a note on that little pink house saying that, you know, they had to pay or they would be harmed. So yeah, it's one of our most heartwarming stories, very sad. And it kind of shows a little bit about what the kids we have have gone through. Due to a lot of miscommunications on our part and misunderstandings on Art for the Soul's part, we did not understand how to spend the money for Art for the Soul. So we weren't able to start actually spending the budget until March of 2020. Here we spent $600 for mainly just visual art supplies. This was the easels, sketchbooks, pens, et cetera, you know, a lot of stuff. Um, due to that, we requested and, and, and um, oh, 
can't think of the word, we, we requested to expand and to continue into the next year, which was already approved. And we will now continue to use our money as originally planned, plus one addition. Uh, we will be purchasing one extra computer for, the, for, for us, since it's currently not working. Okay, sustainability. Um, this has obviously always been an issue for everybody, but I'm sorry, my cat's coming in the frame. <laughs> um, we are continuing to recruit young volunteers that are continuing, uh, which we have a lot of. We have um, even up to middle schoolers helping us out. Uh, once, you know, that, that's a difficult amount of kids and, you know, they don't always, they're not very uh, sustainable in that way. But aside from that, we developed the annual fundraising plan and we did this so that we have a constant and steady and stable way of gaining money throughout the year. This includes um, reaching out so that we have constant donors and we can create connections and, you know, we just, we know where our materials are coming from at all times once we run out of the philanthropy tank budget or things like that so that we know that we can continue to keep going. We also have lead teachers. These aren't volunteers anymore. These are teachers that they are constantly in the program. So despite me graduating next year, we still have these teachers that you know, can continue to carry it on once I leave. And lastly, you guys asked for a timeline. Uh, these are only some of our very smallest events because we have a lot more going on. But uh, you know, we had our first music recital. We had our computer lab installed and our open mic in May. In June, we had scholarships and final evaluations. Uh, July, we had our second ever summer camp. And we also started up for the first time the Dreyfus Preparation Program. In August, we had an open house to be able to meet more people and have people see what we're all about and our normal classes resumed. And in October 19, we'd created a sort of um, publicity system to get, so we printed out some of the children's books and we gave them out this way to, you know, kind of touch donors' hearts and so that they could see what we're doing here and what we're all about. Um, in December, we appeared in the Lake Worth Herald and we also held art galleries and music recitals. In January, we started training volunteers officially instead of just doing it one-on-one. -on -one. We had them all come in at one time. And in March, COVID-19 happened and we had to shut down, but then we started Creative Corner. I also forgot to add in here, but we also, but we became an official 501c3 and we registered with the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Good. Well, we can count you in the nonprofits now. That's <laughs> wonderful. You. Very exciting. Congratulations. A um, lot of good, you speak to my soul because a lot of this planning and fundraising plans and promotion plans and strategic plans are the things that are hard sometimes to take the time to spend doing. First of all, again, Christina, fantastic uh, in initiative. I love having the lead teachers and having the, the, the expertise and the continuity. Um, you really reach out to a very wide spectrum of people, ages 4 to 18, mm -hmm. art, music, whatever touches the soul. Have you thought, as you, now that you've had some experience, whether you should be trying to narrow the focus uh, in any way? I don't think we've ever really thought about focusing on one, like one aspect, because the truth is we do want to apply to everyone. If people see that they might not like music and art, they can focus on their academic tutoring, you know, and they can advance themselves in that way. And um, also a lot of these kids, usually we work with younger kids, but there are kids around 17, 18, you know, teenagers that never got this aid as a young child and they never got these opportunities. So we still want to ensure that they're like, they're, these are available to them too, despite them being a lot older than you would expect. Okay. I hear kind of a common theme and I wanted to put out there that something that could be helpful to everyone in a COVID environment is especially with the people and the students and the children that you're working with is access to internet and Wi-Fi and issues with that. Um, so I am trying to set up a meeting. I have a contact with Comcast. Um, I know Comcast has worked with the Education Foundation. Um, Michael, you're on that board, correct? So I, I was gonna just say, we need to, I think we can continue to make that connection. We have a case to be able to say, we need some assistance and linkage for you guys um, to be able to provide your programs because you're doing excellent programs and 
Hi there, future change maker. Um, we can uh, we can record these lessons and put them out there, but I know part of it is not just recording them as people being able to access them. So um, I think we need to, my note, mental note is for us to pursue that for you all. Okay. Thank and try you. to see what we can do in that respect. Okay. Um, Michael, did you have a question for Christina or anything? Spend your money, please. I mean, you guys have ramped up in some great stuff, but you know, you guys were offered a bunch of cash. So think wisely how to spend it in the next year. Um, I mean, you guys have been prudent with it, but it's, it's yours to spend. So I encourage you to do that. Okay. Yes, we will, of course. Thank you.